any diving operation, dive planning is vital. Although you can occasionally get away without planning during a sport dive, failing to plan a contaminated water diving operation can be fatal. Dive planning is a continuous process. Both long-term and short-term planning are essential. When you are conducting long-term planning, you must consider your personnel, your equipment and the logistical aspects of your operations. Diving in contaminated water takes considerable training. This training is not a one-time event, but must be regarded as an ongoing practice. At a minimum, your training should include dry suit diving skills, training with your helmet or full face mask, hazard identification, contingency planning, and decontamination procedures. Contaminated water operations require excellent teamwork. It takes time to develop a well-coordinated team. You must try to anticipate what your equipment needs will be. It's important to remember that equipment that is used in contaminated environments must be replaced on a regular basis. Dry suits are not difficult to use, but you must be able to control your buoyancy properly while you are wearing the suit. You need to understand how to use your helmet or full face mask and adjust it properly to fit you. As a diver, it's crucial to know what environmental and job hazards are anticipated during the dive. You need to be able to identify contaminants and know which ones are compatible with your diving equipment. You may not always be able to identify hazards yourself. You may need the help of other agencies or organizations to assist you in hazard identification. It's also essential to know what decontamination solutions and materials you will need for your operation. Each dive team should have their own operations manual, which provides the procedures to be followed on any diving operation. The manual must be updated as equipment procedures and personnel change. Special tables are available that will tell you which chemicals are compatible with the various parts of your dry suit. You must use these tables whenever you plan a dive in contaminated water. The tables are also available on CD-ROM. Short-term dive planning concerns the details of an actual diving operation. The plan must include gear selection, personnel assignments, dive station setup and planning for decontamination. Just as there is no one tool that will do every job, there is no one piece of diving equipment that is perfect for every situation. Ideally, each person on your operation should be cross-trained so that they can assume any position on the job. On a long operation, you will probably want to rotate your people through each role. In a surface supplied diving operation, operating the diver's air manifold requires a person who is responsible and alert. The tender will probably need to be encapsulated too and must be properly trained in the use of personal protective equipment. The layout of the dive station and decontamination zones must be taken into account prior to starting the dive. Some of the factors that will affect the layout of the gear and the operation include the type of contamination, wind, support personnel, vehicle traffic and boat traffic. To properly decontaminate the diver, you must know the nature of the contaminants prior to the dive so you can have the proper decon solutions available.